Sroom Bu Fri Te Te Wu Di Hine Wa Hindi Yeda Hini Onsu Manwe Na Amen. <laughs> Rabasiki and Tarabazu, Doria Mama, our King of Kings, our Supreme King, our Eternal Savior, we come before your throne room of grace, we come, O Lord, with our offering, we come before you with our sacrifice of praise, we say you are King and there is none like you, O Abba Father is your name, you who sit the throne, surrounded by the seraphims and the cherubim, who, O Lord, is worthy like you. In holiness, in faithfulness, and in righteousness, you alone are king of all. We bow before you, our soon coming king. We bow before you, our prince of peace. For you are God eternal, you are God everlasting. There is no king, no Lord, we know but you. That is why we have come, O Lord. We worship you and cast our crown before you. We you, Lord of Lords, Lord of hosts, the king supreme. You are worthy you are of our praise. We save it, O Lord, in the highest. We must look here and hear it, Mama. Run, Talabazuki, and do it, Mama. Jesus shall reign. Lifted 
worship you. Oh, glorious God. Oh, glorious God. We praise your crowns and worship. You are the God of hosts, the God eternal, our ancient of days, Lord, who is like unto you. You are Adonai, our maker. We have tried and tested, O Lord, and we have found none who is worthy like thee. You are glorious, our Lord of hosts. You are the Lamb of God that was slain. That is why, O Lord, we bow before you, joining the angelic host, O Lord, to proclaim your majesty, to lift up your glory. Oh, your fragrance, O Lord, overwhelms our hearts from the innermost part of our being. As a church, O Lord, we sing forth of your glory, we sing forth of your might, we sing forth of your power. For you alone are God. There is none, O God, like you. Worthy are you, King Eternal. Worthy are you, our Majestic of Glory. You are worthy to be praised. Le Basandi, E Marabazo Ke Andori Andale, Le Katori Andarabosa, Le Brozi Ke Andarabazo Dori Amama, Le Le Katori Andi, Le Le Katori Amba, Le Basi Ke Andoro Borobo, Le 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 Radosi Ke Ayanda, Abasa Ayanda. Le Cabo, Rados Cale, Ribas, and Le Baru, Le Bruscata, and Daraba, Le Masuki, and the Rebose, 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 Oh, 
Kingdoms of the earth, sing to the Lord, sing praises to the Lord. To him who rises in the heavens, the ancient heavens, behold, he sends out his voice, his mighty voice, ascribe power to God, whose majesty is over Israel. God of Israel, he is the one who gives power and strength. To his people. Blessed be God. I want you to please humbly sit and ponder who God is in your heart. Just visit your mind on God sitting on his throne high above the heavens. Most blessed, most glorious, the ancient of the victorious, thy great name we praise. Most Oh. 
this morning, this afternoon. Daddy Lord, we exalt your holy name and strength and riches and glory and honor belong to you and you alone. You share your glory with no one. You and the Omega, the first and the last. Daddy Lord, this morning we worship you. This morning we magnify your holy say there is none before thee. There is none besides thee and the holy name be praised forever and ever. Have your way, O God, in this service. And with the mighty name of Jesus, Amen. Praise. It is now time for us to listen to the word of God. The word of God is not a matter of conjecture. The word of God is infallible and incorruptible. It is not his own servant to give us the word. I pray that your hearts, pastor's wife, Mama Bridget, Kumi, to give us God's word. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We give glory to God for a beautiful day today. And God, amen. Let the Spirit of the Lord Come down, down. Let the spirit of let the spirit of the Lord come down. Oh, let the spirit of the Lord come down. comes forth to accomplish that for which it was sent. Today your word will come forth, O oh God, and will accomplish that day. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Once again, we give glory to God for today. And it's my singular privilege to speak to you about the word that I've entitled The Abandoned Boats. Hallelujah. The ab 1 to 11 Luke chapter 5 verse 1 to 11 I read the day sorry one day Jesus was preaching on the shore of the sea at the water's edge for the fishermen had left them and were washing their nets stepping into one of the boats Jesus asked Simon if he had finished speaking he said to Simon now go out where it is deeper and let down your nets to catch some food I'll let the nets down again. And this time, yeah. and soon both boats were filled with the fish on the verge of sinking. When Simon Peter realized what had happened, he, he was outstruck by the number of fish they had caught. Jesus replied to Simon, don't be afraid. From now on, you'll be fishing for people. And as soon as they landed, they left everything and followed Jesus. Amen. Amen. God bless you so much. I would want to look for, we can read from 14 to 18, very brief, so we can pray. So Luke chapter 4, verse 14 to 18, please. Luke chapter 4, verse 14 to 18, I read, Then Jesus returned to Galilee and was praised by everyone. When he came to the village of Nazareth, his boyhood home, he went, as usual, to the synagogue on the Sabbath and stood up to read the scriptures. The scroll of Isaiah, the prophet, was handed to him. He unrolled the scroll to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim that captives will be released, that the blind will see, 
that the oppressed will be set free and that the time of the Lord's favor has come. Amen. Eight, eight, four. Oh, 42 to 44, I read. Early the next morning, Jesus went out to an isolated place. The crowd's news of the kingdom of God in, all, in other towns too, because that is why I, I was sent. So he continued to travel around preaching in synagogues throughout Judea. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, my dear, Tia, for this opportunity. So we are going to look at something that I've entitled The Abandoned Boat. I think all throughout this week, if you managed to join the Zoom program that was held by Glasgow Central, had gotten up that day, and as a fisherman, he was quite experienced in that skill and in that trade. That day he had gotten up and went on fishing as usual. And I believe that he set forth with so much optimism. He was optimistic. He knew that well. And when he had set forth in the morning, obviously the heart with which we set out with, true, but he caught nothing. And I pretty much believe that that's a day that he will never forget. The satisfaction that day, he has, hallelujah. The Bible makes us understand that as he didn't catch anything, he just left the boat somewhere, went on to just wash the nets. And I believe that we deliberate on why he didn't catch fish that day. We don't know if he had experienced that before, but that particular day is something we should pay attention to. As he had left the boat abandoned and he was going about his own business at the time. In Luke chapter 4, we also understand that Jesus, who had been, you know, fasting 40 days, 40 nights. If you look, read from Luke 4, verse 1 downwards, where Satan had tempted him and he had, he, he, he had passed the test. In the verse 18, Luke chapter 4, 18, the Bible makes us clear saying that the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed gifts and recovering of sight to the blind to set doing these things if we jump to chapter 4 verse 42 he says that he departed and went into a desert place but the people were still looking for him and he said that i must preach the kingdom of god to other cities if where we read earlier the bible says that when jesus got there genesaret when he got there he found the abandoned boat got there with an assignment Hallelujah. That assignment to preach the good news to the poor. That assignment to bring about healing to the, the, the sick people. That assignment to, cap, to set the captives free. When he got there, when he got there, let's go back to chapter 5, verse 2-3. He saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their little from shore then he sat down and taught the people Peter. jesus got there with a very important assignment and he got into the book kingdom of god that abandoned boat hallelujah today i'm here to talk to you about the abandoned boat in life we do not get the experience that we were looking for we get disappointed along the journey and then that thing only, only reminds you of failure. That thing has something connected to which you don't want to see again. But the next move, he was thinking to himself, maybe I'm not so good at this skill anymore. And there Jesus showed up. He said, I'm not using any other thing but this very boat. Hallelujah. And so today this word of God is coming and I want you to just give an assignment of your own. If you speak to kids, the dreams they have, they're enthusiastic about everything, they're excited about everything, everything looks beautiful, everything looks enthusiasm, that same positivity with which they go about life, as you journey in life, as you experience failures, as you experience disappointment, as you experience rejection, as you experience all the no's in the world, you look behind and you just put them aside. You keep abandoning them. One by one, you keep abandoning the dreams. One by one, you keep abandoning the boat. Hallelujah. And we can relate with Peter, Peter on this. We can really relate to Peter on this. I've come to tell you 
that Jesus is looking for. Those same experiences that brought pain. Those same experiences that brought disappointment. Those same to you that you rather just forget about them. Those same experiences, Jesus is looking for it. He is in that same business of proclaiming good news to the poor. He is in that same business of declaring the kingdom of God to the blind and to the lame. To bring healing to the sick. And he will need our abandoned boats together. And use it as a platform from which he can declare his goodness. Hallelujah. Peter who set forth to fish couldn't fish. Your experience might be different from a fisherman, but it's in that same contest. You may be good at something. You may have had a dream. My brother George went to get married, and I don't know if he's back. But you see when on wedding days and the, the, the joy and everything, so much dream, start a new business, and it's with so much energy. Because you're very positive that this will surely work. And then life just happens. And sometimes things are not the way that we thought it would be. The experiences just do not meet the expectation that we, ha we had in mind. And that was Peter for you that day. That was Peter for you that day. And Jesus took hold of that abandoned boat. That thing that reminded him of failure. And did something with it. Today you may have something. That perhaps brings shame or just brings disappointment. You don't even want to remember it anymore. If you read the story downwards, throughout the week we talked about the bit about obedience, so I'm not touching on that today. But we know that eventually, eventually, at the word of Jesus, hallelujah, Peter caught more fish that he couldn't even pull the boat out. And that was because he obeyed. But I'll skip that and we move on to to the latter verses, which would be verse 8, 9, 10. When Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knee and said, Go away from the Lord, I am a sinful man. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken. And so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. Then Jesus said to Simon, Don't be afraid. From now on, you will fish for people. Hallelujah. You will fish for people. I want to jump straight based on this verse, just talk about purpose. Purpose. In Jeremiah 1 5, the Bible says that before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. And so Peter, Jesus knew Peter. Jesus knew Peter right from when he was there, that this is who he was. And this is what he was meant to be. Your purpose will, be, will not be too far from what you can relate with. For Peter, because he was a fisherman, Jesus just went on to say that you're rather going to fish for people. And so that was relatable. That was something he can connect with. And if God knew Peter in his mother's womb, he knew that this was what he was cut out for. He was fishing, all right. But then his purpose actually was to fish for people. And through that experience, God just brought him to his purpose. And I want to tell you that those same places that maybe you tried that it failed, that same place, that same venture, that same experience that you've had maybe with your business or with, with your career, or with, with life generally, there are some pertinent things from it that God can relate to with your destiny. And as you zoom in and you allow those places um, to, to be put before his altar, he's able to use that same experience to pull you into your purpose. Hallelujah. If you look in the Bible, Moses, we all know Moses. Moses grew up in, 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 in the house of Pharaoh. And the Bible makes us understand that one day he just saw two people fight. And then he tried to resolve it. And sad, unfortunately, he killed the Egyptians. So he had to run away. 
When I look at the story of Moses, I see that he just was a leader and he had love for people. And it's not surprising that eventually is in that sense. Joseph will have a dream. And it's not surprising that that same dream habit was consistent with throughout his life. He will have a dream of what he would, you know, what, that his brothers will bow before him one day. And eventually it was a dream that got him. David as a warrior in the desert again will kill the bears and the lions. And eventually David as a king, he was a warrior. Today there is something that maybe can remind you of that which perhaps you have started with. It's time to put it in the hands of God for him to do something with it, for him to carve something out of it. In your mother's womb, God knew you. He knows you by name. And he has a purpose for you. But don't look too far off from where you are now. Because in those same circumstances, in those same circumstances, in those same circumstances, Hallelujah. He's able to bring you to your destiny. He will use those same experiences and those same failures, those same disappointments, those same rejections and experiences. He's able to bring about beauty from your ashes. Hallelujah. We all know this and we say this so often. All things work together for them that are called according to his. The bad, the ugly, the beautiful, everything, all of it put together. And sometimes, most times, all of the time, God wants to use all of it. Don't be quick to put, that, that takes you surrounding it to him, saying, Lord Jesus, you are the Lord of my life and the God of my life. And things are not going the way you wanted it to be. You are not seeing things the way you wanted to see it. You are quick to go back to him. You don't abandon it and move on. You lay it at the altar of the Lord. Hallelujah. This afternoon, that's the call of God on our lives. That's what he's hearkening on to us this afternoon. That we will be quick to just leave it in his hands. If he took the abandoned boat of Peter and did something with it, he's able to do the same. And Jesus hasn't changed. He still wants to proclaim good news to the poor. He still wants to show the world that he's got might. Hallelujah. What God can do. Hallelujah. And so your experience and your testimonies become weapons in the house of God and in the hands of God. Because through that, many will know that indeed the spirit of the Lord is around to bring about good to the, to, to the poor. Hallelujah. To bring about healing to the, to the sick. Hallelujah. What has been your experience so far? If you can cast your mind back, I'm giving us all the opportunity to do a soul search this afternoon. It's not just to come in the presence of God and just leave the same. Jesus is real, hallelujah, and he's true. And he's life-giving. And he changes destinies. What has been your experience so far? The problem is as we keep abandoning things, we end up justifying what we are to be and maybe this is just me and we sort of justify the experiences and we don't aim for anything high up there. Because we can conclude that, well, maybe this is just me. This is how God... Peter could have that day just decided that maybe fishing was not for me after all. After all, I've been there, I didn't catch anything. If a good fisherman goes out, he surely should catch something. He didn't catch anything that day. Seek out your purpose. And don't forget that those same experiences, if you are 20 years old, 30 years old, 50 years old, right from day one when we were, you were born, those same experiences, whatever it was, if it was abuse in your childhood, if it was us through your education if it was the failed marriage whatever it may be Jesus is calling on us this afternoon he is looking for some abandoned boat hallelujah what is yours what is yours what is mine 
if we are willing to lay that at the altar this afternoon, say in the scriptures, if Jesus ever used any boat anywhere to preach, he didn't need it. If you look in, in the Luke chapter 4, he didn't say that Jesus had to get into a boat to preach. He still was able to declare the good news. On this occasion, go on. But I believe your boats is rightly placed, hallelujah, for him to reach some people. Your story, your testimony will be that plus some people to also receive their deliverance, hallelujah. The people kept chasing him and he said that I have an assignment. I have an important job to do. And he said, I have to go. Today, have a think through and do a soul search. Let's leave them at the altar of God today. Don't take them with you. Or don't even push them so far behind your thoughts and your soul that you don't remember them. He is able to just take it all, gather them all, and create something beautiful out of it. And I will say to you that I will be all power of your purpose on earth. So leave it in the hands of God and surrender to Him. Hallelujah. God needs it all. He is God. We are not. And so our failures and disappointment and weaknesses, we can always bring it to him. This afternoon we have the opportunity to bring it all to his feet. And he will use it. Your pain, your testimony, your experiences, most times become your ministry. Hallelujah. Jesus does not waste it. He doesn't waste it. If you're in life looking for purpose, what is my purpose in life? He is willing to tell you what it is. But don't be quick to just move on without looking at where you are now. And your experiences. And your failures. And those things that perhaps didn't go the way you wanted it. Leave it in his hands. And he wouldn't waste it. you create something beautiful out of it. Hallelujah. I just want us to read Psalm 112. As I bring this message to an end. Psalm 100. Blessed are those who fear the Lord, who find great delight in his commands. Their children will be mighty in the land. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches are in their houses, and their righteousness endures forever. Even in darkness, light dawns for the upright. For those who are gracious and compassionate and righteous, good will come to those who are generous and learn freely, who conduct their affairs with justice. Surely the righteous will never be shaken. They will be remembered forever. Verse 7, this is why I want to dwell on. They will have no fear of bad news. Their hearts are steadfast, trusting in the Lord. Hallelujah. I read the 7 again. They will have no fear of bad news. Their hearts are steadfast, trusting in the Lord. Hallelujah. Have faith in God because he's more than able to turn your ashes into beauty. And it includes everything. Everything. Right from when you were born. Today we want to allow ourselves that God will do a work in us. Not just jumping on and moving on and moving on and moving on. But that he will do work in us. That he will take our ashes. He will take our failures. He will take our disappointments. He will take our rejections. He will take whatever it is. And do something with it. Hallelujah. When I was growing up, at the time when I turned 30 years old, I still wasn't married. And 
I remember my auntie would call and say, Bridget, what's wrong with you? 30 years and you're still not married. And I was here and she was back in Africa. And, you know, one day, early morning, she would call and say these things. And it really bothered me. And I knew that I was praying and do every, doing everything. But, well, I just had come. The things that you're passionate about and want to talk about. And I'm saying this because I got married, I think, at the age of 31 or so. And now, when I see a young woman, maybe in their 20s, I'm just passionate about that subject. I'm just passionate. That was because it was my experience. As much as at that time, it was that. Now, looking back, I just thank God for how faithful he was. And he has been to me. And so I have that heart desire. And what I'm trying to say is that your experience can be that thing that causes a stay in your heart, in your passion. And from that same place, God is able to minister to someone. And his assignment hasn't changed. It's still about doing good. Hallelujah. He's still going about declaring good news to the poor. Declaring the kingdom to the world. And he needs you. He needs your broken places. Hallelujah. He needs my broken places. Today, can you bring them before God? Can you allow your soul to, to just cough them all out? I don't want you to keep it there. It does you no good when you're keeping it there. It rather just make you justify, justify some things. We don't want to keep going on justifying things. But we rather want him to use us for what he wants to use us for. The same way that he used Peter to become fishers of people. He's calling on us. Whatever it may be. He's calling. God, I bring my brokenness to you. I bring my rejections to you. I bring my failures to you. I bring my disaster before you. What can you do with it? And he says, I can do everything with it. Because I'm more than able. He is God at the end of the day. He is God at the end of the day. He is able to turn all that ashes into beauty. And he's able to put them all together. And the glory will go on to him. He's Hallelujah. Able to deliver. He's able to deliver. He's, he's able, able to deliver. The Spirit of the Lord is able to deliver, to deliver. The Spirit of the Lord, Spirit of the Lord is able to deliver. He's able to deliver. Spirit of the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord, Spirit of the Lord, He is able to deliver. The Spirit of the Lord, Spirit of the Lord, He is able to deliver. The Spirit. Just bring yourself before God this afternoon. His word has come forth. He's needing you as a vessel that he can use. And he's needing to use even the disappointment in your life. He's needing to use any failures that you've encountered. He's needing to use your broken places as a platform. Just bring yourself before God this afternoon. That he would do a work in you and do a work in your heart. Cosidne 
Makosiba shi andere be kalaba. Masiba hula kasinda ra ba kandere be. Masile shuba hasi kandere be be. Masole le koshi handere ba sahaha. Male sola kosi ha ha le le be. Makusi handere ba kala. Mesu shandere be suba ba ka. Mahasi kandere be shala ba si kandere be. Malo si na le ba kasi ba ba ha le. Makusi ba ba shi ba ba si ba ba ha. Makole si ma ma handere be be ko. Masi ba holy ko si ma ha le le be. Makandelo si ba shi ba ba ha. Miko si ma ha la la ba ka ba. Male ko si ba ba ha le. Makusi na le be ko si ba ba ha. Male ko shendere si ha le le be ya. Ima lo ko si ma kandere be be. Male ko si ba shi handere be. Ma kandere ba so ho la la ba ba ka ha. Ma si ba ha la la ba kandere be. Ma kandere be ha la. Sometimes we are the we become gods of our lots of our own selves. We forget that He is Lord. We forget that we have a Lord, and we've become our own lords. And that is why we are quick to justify things. Peter, for his experience, thought he was a good fisherman, and so that was the end of it. But Jesus turned on the scene and he changed things around and he turned things around and he said to him that go again. He went again and the story was different. Then he realized that, come on, I may not be that great after all. Now I've seen the Lord. Now I've seen the Lord. Hallelujah. If you have seen the Lord, Jesus. you wouldn't be the Lord of your own life. But as you journey on and as you experience things, rather than abandoning them, you are quick to surrender. Hallelujah. Say it all to Jesus. Every bit of our lives, we want to surrender it all to Jesus. He's interested in all of it. He's interested in all of it. He's interested in all of it. Bring it all before him and leave them at the altar today. Don't take any with you. Just surrender it all to Jesus. Free up yourself and give it all to him. All to Jesus I surrender. To him I freely give. surrender all to him this afternoon we want to surrender it all to you Jesus 
We surrender all to you, Jesus. We don't become gods of our own selves, oh God. We want to surrender all to you, Jesus. We surrender all to you, Jesus. We surrender all to you, Jesus. We surrender all to you, Jesus. That you would, Lord, have your way, oh God, so that you can have room to do what you want to do. We bring it all before you, Jesus. We bring it all before you, Jesus. And we surrender our hearts to you. We surrender our desires to you. We surrender our dreams to you. We surrender our experiences to you. We surrender our failures to you. Whatever you when we walk with the Lord in, in the light of His Word, for oh, the glory He shares on our ways, whites with us still, and with all who will trust. And obey. Oh, trust and obey. For there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Hebrews 11, it talks to us about what faith is. The evidence of things hoped for. Today, you are coming before God today. The things that you are hoping for and the things that you are desiring, though you have not seen it. Because He is God. And we can trust in His grace. And in His might and in His love. I want you to just lift up your voice and say unto him that you are trusting him. That he is the God who is able to take you on this journey and bring you to an expected end. If we can only trust and obey, then we are not even afraid of bad news. Because we know the God that we serve. He is able to bring about a shift in the system. He is able to bring about a shift in the atmosphere. He's able to bring about a shift in this for you again. If we have abandoned anything, oh God, in our lives, the boat that we shall go on this journey, yes, that our experiences, our failures, and everything, oh God, that which we don't even want to associate with anymore, oh God, the shame and everything, oh God. Yes. God, you want to pick the same things, oh God. You want to turn our sorrows, you want to use it to, oh God, magnify your name. You want to use this, oh God, our experiences to declare your good works, to declare your goodnesses of us, oh God. Every piece of us, and use it for your own glory. And Father, we want to just thank you for today, and we have done in our midst. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen.